This is about the rise of AI crawlers. If you want to know how AI is getting the information it has to show you and how you can be included in that information, this is for you. This comes from Vercel.com. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's called the rise of the AI crawler. The subheading says that the top AI crawlers have very distinct patterns and are very different from traditional search engine crawlers. So I'm going to read this and I'm going to explain it as I go. I have a lot of experience with Googlebot and actually with AI crawlers too, because I'm seeing a lot of my websites getting covered on ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude. So if you want some insights on how you can be covered with generative AI, this is for you. Here we go. AI crawlers have become a significant presence on the web. OpenAI's GPT bot generated 569 million requests across Vercel's network in the past month, while Anthropic's Claude followed with 370 million. For perspective, this combined volume represents about 20% of Googlebot's 4.5 billion requests during the same period. And Vercel is a platform for front-end developers. It makes it a lot easier to build, deploy, and scale web applications. And I'm going to go into this a bit more as I continue reading, but here we go. Let's continue. After analyzing how Googlebot handles JavaScript rendering with MERJ, we turned our attention to these AI assistants. Our new data reveals how OpenAI's ChatGPT, Anthropics Claude, and other AI tools crawl and process web content. Merge, M-E-R-J, it's a web performance and observability platform. It helps analyze how different crawlers and bots and users interact with websites. So Vercel says, we uncovered clear patterns in how these crawlers handle JavaScript, prioritize content types, and navigate the web, which directly impact how AI tools understand and interact with modern web applications. Our primary data comes from monitoring nextjs.org and the Vercel network for the past few months. To validate our findings across different technology stacks, we also analyzed two job board websites, Resume Library, built with Next.js, and CV Library, which uses a custom monolithic framework. This diverse data set helps ensure our observations about crawler behavior are consistent across different web architectures. I have a bunch of web applications. One of them is a monolith and the other is microservices. So I'm, I'm interested to see what this article says. Now we get into scale and distribution. The volume of AI crawler traffic across Vercel's network is substantial. In the past month, Googlebot, 4.5 billion fetches across Gemini and Search. GPTBot, which is ChatGPT, 569 million fetches. Claude, 370 million fetches. AppleBot, 314 million fetches. PerplexityBot, 24.4 million fetches. While AI crawlers haven't reached Googlebot's scale, they represent a significant portion of web crawler traffic. For context, GPT-Bot, Claude, AppleBot, and PerplexityBot combined account for nearly 1.3 billion fetches, a little over 28% of Googlebot's volume. All of the AI crawlers we measured operate from U.S. data centers, ChatGPT in Iowa and Phoenix, Claude in Ohio. In comparison, traditional search engines often distribute crawling across multiple regions. For example, Googlebot operates from seven different U.S. locations, including Oregon, Iowa, and South Carolina. This is where it starts getting really interesting. So JavaScript rendering capabilities. Our analysis shows a clear divide in JavaScript rendering capabilities among AI crawlers. To validate our findings, we analyze both Next.js applications and traditional web applications using different tech stacks. The results consistently show that none of the major AI crawlers currently render JavaScript. This includes OpenAI, Anthropic, Meta, ByteDance, Perplexity. The results also show that Google's Gemini leverages Googlebot's infrastructure, enabling full JavaScript rendering, which isn't actually totally true, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. AppleBot renders JavaScript through a browser-based crawler similar to Googlebot. It processes JavaScript, CSS, AJAX requests, and other resources needed for full page rendering. Common Crawl CC Bot, which is often used as a training data set for large language models that does not render pages. The data indicates that while ChatGPT and Cloud Crawlers do fetch JavaScript files, they don't execute them. They can't read client-side rendered content. It's worth noting, however, that content included in the initial HTML response like JSON data or relayed React server components may still be indexed since AI models can interpret non-HTML content. 
In contrast, Gemini's use of Google's infrastructure gives it the same rendering capabilities we documented in our Googlebot analysis, allowing it to process modern web applications fully. From my experience, if you just have client side rendering in and you don't have server side rendering in, if you're building a web application, this is relevant to you. If you're not building a custom web app or something, if you're just doing a WordPress site, for example, this isn't relevant to you. But if you're actually building a web application, this is going to be very relevant to you. From my experience, Googlebot will invest. Re so it's more resource intensive to crawl through single page applications without server side rendering. And for that reason, Google uses those resources on web apps that are actually getting traffic. And so if you are do trying to do SEO, but you don't have that much traffic, it's hard to guarantee that Googlebot is still going to crawl all of your stuff if you're not using server-side rendering. If you're using server-side rendering, you're fine. If you're not using server-side rendering, it's really a problem. If you're getting a, if you're going viral and you're not using server-side rendering, it doesn't matter as much, but it's just always a best practice to put in server-side rendering. And if you're going viral and you don't have server-side rendering, this is saying that ChatGPT is not going to be able to learn from anything that is on your website. Even if you're getting tons of traffic, if you don't have server-side rendering, ChatGPT is not going to be able to get anything from your site if you are a single page app. Let's continue with the article. Now we get into content type priorities. AI crawlers show distinct preferences in the types of content they fetch. On nextjs.org, the most notable patterns are ChatGPT prioritizes HTML content, Claude focuses heavily on images, both crawlers spend significant time on JavaScript files despite not executing them. For comparison, Googlebot's fetches across Gemini and Search are more evenly distributed. 31% HTML, 29% JSON, 20% plain text, 15% JavaScript. These patterns suggest AI crawlers collect diverse content types, HTML images, and even JavaScript files as text, likely to train their models on various forms of web content. While traditional search engines like Google have optimized their crawling patterns specifically for search indexing, newer AI companies may still be refining their content prioritization strategies. By the way, I want to thank Kamesh for sending me this article. The reason I'm even reading this in the first place is I got a message this morning from someone named Kamesh, and Kamesh left this request on edwardsturm.com using my contact form. Kamesh said, can you make a podcast episode on this? I would love to get your thoughts specifically on the recommendations of this article. So that's why I'm doing this. And it is an interesting article. I've spent so much time studying how Googlebot works and how Googlebot works with single page applications because I have single page applications. And also because I just want to be the best SEO around. And if you want to be really good at digital marketing, this is something that's worth understanding. If you want to be super, super dangerous, I, try, I want to be and a crazy dangerous digital marketer. And if you want to be a crazy dangerous digital marketer, this is worth looking into and worth understanding. So we go back to the article. Now we're going to talk about crawling inefficiency. Our data shows significant inefficiencies in AI crawler behavior. ChatGPT spends 34% of its fetches on 404 pages. A 404 page is when the page does not exist. ChatGPT is spending 34% of its fetches on 404 pages. Claude is showing similar patterns with 34% of its fetching fetches hitting 404s. ChatGPT spends an additional 14% of fetches following redirects. Analysis of 404 errors reveals that excluding robots.txt, these crawlers frequently attempt to fetch outdated assets from the static folder. This suggests a need for improved URL selection and handling strategies to avoid unnecessary requests. These high rates of 404s and redirects contrast sharply with Googlebot, which spends only 8% of fetches on 404s and 1% on redirects, suggesting Google has spent more time optimizing its crawler to target real resources. Of course it has. Googlebot is so mature. There have been so much resources and capital poured into optimizing Googlebot. Now we're on traffic correlation analysis. Our analysis of traffic patterns reveals interesting correlations between crawler behavior and site traffic. Based on data from nextjs.org, pages with higher organic traffic receive more frequent crawler visits, is what I was saying. AI crawlers show less predictable patterns in their URL selection. High 404 rates suggest AI crawlers may need to improve their URL selection 
and validation processes, though the exact cause remains unclear because these AI crawlers crawling so many 404 pages. While traditional search engines have developed sophisticated prioritization algorithms, AI crawlers are seemingly still evolving their approach to web content discovery. Something worth saying is OpenAI, because of its partnership with Microsoft, is still getting a lot of information, a lot of the same information that Bing gets. A way to get included with ChatGPT is to make sure that you register with Bing Webmaster Tools. Also, put your sitemap in your robots.txt file. This helps so that any bot, any crawler, will know all the pages that you want them to know on your site. A sitemap is a list of all the pages on your site that you want a search engine or a, or, or a bot to know. And so you link to your sitemap in your robots.txt and robots.txt is specifically made for these crawlers. So do that and make sure that you are connected to Bing Webmaster Tools with your sitemap submitted to Bing Webmaster Tools. Same goes for Google Search Console. Of course, Google Search Console is a must for anybody doing SEO. Here's a quote in this article. Our research with Vercel highlights that AI crawlers, while rapidly scaling, continue to face significant challenges in handling JavaScript and efficiently crawling content. As the adoption of AI-driven web experiences continues to gather pace, brands must ensure that critical information is server-side rendered and that their sites remain well-optimized to sustain visibility in an increasingly diverse search landscape. Exactly what I said. Recommendations. Here we go. So this is for site owners who want to be crawled. Prioritize server-side rendering for critical content. ChatGPT and Claude don't execute JavaScript, so any important content should be server rendered. This includes main content, articles, product information, documentation, meta information, titles, descriptions, categories, and navigation structures. SSR, ISR, and SSG keep your content accessible to all crawlers. Client-side rendering still works for enhancement features. Feel free to use client-side rendering for non-essential dynamic elements like view counters, interactive UI enhancements, live chat widgets, and social media feeds. So anything that you don't need to be indexed by a search engine or by an AI chatbot, that can be client-side rendered. Efficient URL management matters more than ever. The high 404 rates from AI crawlers highlight the importance of maintaining proper redirects, keeping sitemaps up to date, and using consistent URL patterns across your site. I talk about information architecture all the time on this show. That's how you structure the information on your site, especially with how you are structuring pages and subfolders. So I like having hub pages. I ha like having my hub pages linked to from the footer or the header. I like the hub pages going to all these relevant pages with that, that should be covered in a hub page. So you might see something like, actually I'll, I'll show, I'll give you what I'm doing for compact keywords. Compact keywords is my SEO program, which I have been making since February. The URL is edwardsturm.com forward slash compact dash keywords. And then the program, which is going to be gated, is edwardsturm.com forward slash compact dash keywords forward slash program. And then I have all the program materials after the forward slash program. So it's, I'm using subfolders and it's very clear subfolders. I also constantly crawl my own site using Screaming Frog to make sure I don't have any 404ing pages. And I have very clear information architecture. It's very clear that compact dash keywords forward slash program forward slash whatever comes after program, it's the program materials of compact keywords. The reason, by the way, that I'm putting it on my site, so actually I have compactkeywords.com, which goes to edwardsturm.com forward slash compact dash keywords. The reason I'm even doing this is because while being an amazing program, it's also a linkable asset. Lots of people, when this releases, are going to be talking about compact keywords, sending it around, sharing it around, and by living on edwardsturm.com, that increases the SEO of everything else on edwardsturm.com. And that's why I'm doing it like this. A lot of people, they, they segment their projects out, even though lots of their projects are related to one another. And by putting them, the ones that are related to one another on the same domain, you can increase domain authority a lot. All right, so now we get into the part of the article for owners who don't wanna be crawled. You're doing some dark stuff and you don't want your content to be crawled. Here's what to do. Use robots.txt to control crawler access. The robots.txt file is effective for all measured crawlers. Set specific rules for AI crawlers by specifying their user agent or product token to restrict access to sensitive or non-essential content. 
to find the user agent to disallow, you'll need to look in each company's own documentation. For example, Applebot and OpenAI's crawlers. Block AI crawlers with Vercel's WAF. Our Block AI bot's firewall rule lets you block AI crawlers with one click. This rule automatically configures your firewall to deny their access. This also makes me think maybe it's worth just because these crawlers are wasting, these AI crawlers are wasting so many resources on 404 content and content that just doesn't matter. It might be worth blocking them from everything but your pages that you want them to be crawled. So these are any resources that you that you have. Like when you see Screaming Frog crawl your site, you'll notice it picks up a lot of stuff. And a lot of that stuff is not what searchers want to see or what users want to see. And so it might be worth blocking that stuff off in your robots.txt file for these AI chatbots. Or you could just set the user agent for any of these. Actually, you know what? I'm going to update what I just said just for any any user agent, any bot, you don't want them to see this irrelevant stuff. So disallow the stuff that you don't want searchers to be seeing. You could disallow certain directories like admin or login or cart, and you have this set for all the user agents. Back to the article, this is called for AI users, JavaScript rendered content may be missing. Since ChatGPT and Claude don't execute JavaScript, their responses about dynamic web applications may be incomplete or outdated. Consider the source. High 404 rates mean that when AI tools cite specific web pages, there is a significant chance those URLs are incorrect or inaccessible. I want to say this again. High 404 rates mean that when AI tools cite specific web pages, there is a significant chance those URLs are incorrect or inaccessible. For critical information, always verify sources directly rather than relying on AI provided links. Expect inconsistent freshness. While Gemini leverages Google's infrastructure for crawling, other AI assistants show less predictable patterns. Some may reference older cache data. Interestingly, when asking Claude or ChatGPT for fresh Next.js docs data, we often don't see immediate fetches in our server logs. This suggests that AI models may rely on cache data or training data, even when they claim to have fetched the latest information. That's wild. Final thoughts. Our analysis reveals that AI crawlers have quickly become a significant presence on the web with nearly 1 billion monthly requests across Vercel's network. However, their behavior differs markedly from traditional search engines when it comes to rendering capabilities, content priorities, and efficiency. Following established web development best practices, particularly around content accessibility, remains crucial. So there you go. If you want to be covered by AI chatbots, do the things that I talked about. Also, something else, AI chatbots like having a neutral tone in writing and less sensationalized writing. That also helps. No, obviously, knowledgeable use of keywords is also, is also relevant. I actually talk about all this stuff in compact keywords. Within pretty much every part of compact keywords, I'm also giving best practices that work for AI bots because I'm constantly covered in AI bots. But back to this article, if you have a single page application, Make sure you are using server-side rendering because these AI bots cannot read client-side rendered stuff. Same goes for Google. Google can read it, but it's not going to put in resources unless it's getting a lot of traffic. So I want to thank Kamesh for sending me this. I really enjoyed this article. It totally enhanced my knowledge of AI. I'm going to actually be able to make a lot of videos about this too. A lot of short form videos for TikTok and Instagram. This one sentence stuck out. AI models may rely on cache data or training data even when they claim to have fetched the latest information. Anyway, this is a crazy article. Link for it is in the description for this episode. And this is episode 536 of my daily digital marketing podcast. 536 episodes in a row every day, not missing a day since starting episode 536. We're out here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you're watching or listening, thank you so much. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.